Am I really live? Yeah. I'm live. live? Is he hey, y'all. What is up? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? I missed you guys. I really did. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful and safe and somewhat rambunctious holiday season because mine was off the hook. So, but this is how we're starting off the new year. I can't tell you guys how excited I am. And once you see what I'm going to show you later, then you will understand why I am this excited. But right now, you probably think I'm just weird. But I don't care. So, eh. But, no. I got this We're all weird. It's all good. It's see? Fine. See? This is why I eat this is my board. This weird shares weird. You know, that's how it goes. But hold on. Before you start uh, confessing. Uh, I should stop. Yeah. yeah don't bro. confess yet. Don't <laughs> confess yet. This is Crucifix, y'all. What's good, world? What's going on, man? Man, man, I'm just happy to be here, man. Appreciate y'all having us out today. Dude, thank you. I am Absolutely, so happy man. you showed up, dude. Okay, now, this is why, y'all. This is why, now, I read this bio, and, like, y'all probably don't know what I know, because I just found out my damn self, but I wish I knew what I know now, earlier, because then I wouldn't be so surprised about what I know, but this is what I know. This dude's insane, man. This dude has just done all kinds of shit, dude. I mean, and his music is just off the hook is it's incredible you gotta check it out and you will later but right now let's get to know this fool okay let's talk to crucifix well i'm gonna talk to him y'all gonna listen y'all gonna y'all can chat now but type slow because i do too absolutely so show mercy but crucifix man what the hell dude i mean tell us about yourself dude tell them because what y'all want to know man oh my god let's see uh well I don't even know where to start, dude. Okay. Now, I don't even know where to start. I mean, there's so much. And <laughs> hey, you're the right nigga, man. What well, the hell? Okay, now, I put this on my Facebook earlier. Mm -hmm. I put this on Facebook earlier. I said it's not often that I get tongue-tied and I just don't have anything to say that I just, because there's so much I want to say that I don't know how to, you know where I'm headed yeah. with this, right? And I don't get that way. I mean, with nobody. No, not even cops. <laughs> Nobody. Always got something to say to a cop. Hell man. yeah, it's not oh. the right thing, but it's always something. But this, I mean, he's done so much. All right, first of all, like, where were you, you were born in like I was Georgia, born, right? I was born in uh, Decatur, Georgia. Okay, now where were you raised? Well, I grew up. I spent the majority of my young life in uh, the Atlanta area, and then uh, moved to Africa when I was twelve. So, first was uh, Congo, which is now you know Democratic Republic of Congo. But we were there for a couple years, but Political instability, just a lot of issues there, so we ended up having to move to Rwanda, and then uh, was actually in the genocide in 1994, and then had to get evacuated from Rwanda and moved to Kenya. So I spent a good portion of my early teens, you know, that adolescent period where you're just growing and you're, you know, you're really just developing into, you know, a young man, going through some some tough times there in Africa, and then end up coming back to the states when I was about 18, and lived in Atlanta for most of my life, spent some time in Nashville, and now, it's Colorado all the way, baby. And, he, and I thought we were taking local music global. He, he did it all by his damn self. He <laughs> needed no help. This fool just like caught a ticket and just like went on. Now, you started mu doing music like at what age? Man, I started, I started, I mean, you know, probably four or five with the broomstick on the fireplace pretending you're a rock star, you know. Oh. But, you know, but that, I don't think that really counts. Yeah, it does. Like, wait, no, did you have like? Wait, 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 did you have like the like you know the towel with the safety clip around? The towel. Yeah, the, the, the cape. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I was thinking more Gene Simmons tongue, you know, like the ah type thing, you know. See, I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> do that, I wasn't either, man. Hell no, I had to do man. that by myself, man. If my mama caught me trying to listen to, man, some like kids, you listen to like, you with the devil and get hit with a skillet. Thing. It's not a good look. No, you, you being raised down in Georgia, you know what I'm talking Absolutely, about. Absolutely, man. You Absolutely. know, you feel me. Yeah, so, grew, you know, I grew up fairly conservative, and so, uh, you know, I had a passion for music, didn't really know how to, to, to you know, express it or bring it out, and then um, I think it was about eight, we were, uh, I started really getting into hip-hop, you know, there was a lot of kids on the corner in Decatur, and we, we were all just freestyling, and it just became, the whole battle thing, when that, when that hit, I mean, and it was just a way where you could just kind of beat up the dude next to you without having to swing your fist, and it was an easy resolve, Yeah, it, it became very, you know, it just, it was like second nature, so, I think... I really started getting hooked when um, I was trying to convince my parents we need to go get some pizza and they didn't want to listen. So I just busted out a freestyle about how we need to get pizza. And when I got done, I was like, yo, this is this is hot. I can't do this. <laughs> and so it kind of just 
went from there. And then uh, when, when I went to Africa the first time, I had a guy, he gave me like 100 bucks before I left. And he said, just get whatever you want. I bought a keyboard. And so I started learning to play the piano and make beats. And, and that just inspired a, a creativity I didn't know I had. And it just kind of went from there, man. That's what's, man, because so, like what you have produced, like so far what I've heard, it's incredible. Appreciate it, man. My play, they, I'm telling you, you got to listen and you will. But no, with this, some of your experience in Africa, did I have a lot to do, like influence on the music that you started producing and what you're doing now? I mean, absolutely. I think I mean to me, music is always, at least at least for me, it's always just like, I don't know, it's just like the song of the soul. You know, it's like there's a lot of for me there was a lot of therapy. So when when you go through things, especially like you know the Rwandan genocide at a young age, you see things that you at that, at that time you don't really know how to process. And then, you know, years go by and then you start, you know, you kind of start to come to grips with, with what you've been through and you don't really have an outlet, you know. So music kind of became that outlet for me and I just started pouring my heart out. And as I did that, it was there was so much healing in it. But at the same time, I started seeing how other people would respond, you know. People would, would listen and they would relate. And then you're like, man, not only am I getting something out of this, I'm able to give something to somebody else. And it just kind of snowballed from there, man. It just started going. So it's like you being their voice. You're saying the words that they couldn't say or come up with, but they can totally relate to it. Exactly. Now, see, that's cool. That's a good look. And see, that's what uh, that's what I like about your music, because you listen to a lot of music out there right now. There's, it's a shell. Yeah. It's it's empty. I mean, it had, may have a nice beat, mm -hmm. and that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. Great production. Yeah. I need something a little bit deeper, you know. Yeah. If I want something shallow, I'll go to a strip club. But I, need, <laughs> exactly. I, I need something with a little bit more depth. There's something yeah. I want to listen to, you know. Something I want to. I mean, I mean, yeah. I still like some of the, you know, the unnecessary shit too. Just yeah. when you feel like having fun. But for the most part, no. I can't really get into like the mindless the dribble shallow, is what yeah. I call it. Exactly. This mindless dribble, you know. A, lo a lot for me, man, is is I think about. I kind of look at every song like, what if this was my last. What if these are the last few words that I get to say that I could write on paper? And in that mind state, it puts you, you, it always gives you something, you know, important to say. And so when I think about it like that, it's like, if these are my last few words, you know, what am I going to leave behind me? Am I going to leave a legacy of, if that's all people have to remember me by when I'm gone is just the music that I had. Is it going to speak to them or are they just going to be able to maybe nod their head? Because cause music goes in and out. I mean, we don't remember what was hot five years ago for the most part. I mean, we just, it just kind of fades out. But the stuff, I mean, that's just legendary. People that, that dig from the heart. You got guys like Bob Marley, like Pac, you know, guys that just have really timeless. been timeless. And that's that's really, for me personally, it's like I could sacrifice the entire music industry for just making music that's timeless. See, there you go. Now, see, that's that's an artist. Yeah. That's an artist. You have, like, you know, like you have singers, you have vocalists. Mm -hmm. You have drummers, you have percussionists. You have people that can play the piano, you have pianists, you got people that do music, and then you have artists. Mm -hmm. I consider you an artist. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I just they ask like, like what are, you, are you a rapper? Are you a singer? I, I really just don't know. Yeah, because you can do whatever both. I want me today, you know? You can totally do just both. Do now, now, what? Okay, let's talk about your rapping. Okay. Let's talk about the rapping because, like, well, I've, I heard you sing and then I heard you rapping. I thought it was two different casts. That's kind of what I was going for. I was just trying to confuse the, you. Yeah, what the hell did you do that for, man? You didn't even know me. I'm man. getting picked on by everybody, dude. That's, everybody. It's a psychic thing. It is. Telepathic. Mm -hmm. You notice right, he, he's wearing my hat, too, and, and you didn't know that was going down before this started. You know? Oh. It's Ooh. telepathic. See? See? Mm -hmm. See? See? And I didn't even know what was going on, man. And I, I wonder what the hell was tickling on my face. <laughs> he's just tickling on my face. I know. I felt like I had long hair for a minute. There you go. Uh, <laughs> no body, no bounce. No. <laughs> No, but, oh, but, no, no, it's just, I just love it, man. It's just, like, I really do. Now, okay, let's talk about this, though. Now, see, he brought up the hat, and now I got to really do something about that. Just rip the tag. No, I'm not ripping the tag. Yeah, the no. tag's kind of hot. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping the tag. Yeah. I, and I don't even normally do that shit. I remember back in the day we used to do that stuff, but, you know, people started saying it was from Kmart, so we started taking it off. <laughs> you got to take the Kmart off, Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, just like, you can't be, like, getting a special, like, five ninety nine. No, I mean, like, you're not a starter. No, no. <laughs> come on. No, but who came up with this? This insignia. What is it first? Tell everybody what this is. Well, I mean, you know, we uh, the second album that I released was called Crucignati. The very first album I did was I wrote over a period of about two years when I was homeless in Atlanta. And uh, 
and since music was so much therapy for me, I was, I was just on the floor of a crack house and just going through it and just scribbling out everything that, that was on my heart. And so after compiling about two years worth of writings, I, I ended up releasing an album called My Life's Prayer, and it was, it was a really, really rough record. It was, yeah. a, it was like a double disc record. We, we only released it independently in, in Atlanta, uh, just straight up underground. And then a lot of change happened in my life. I, I, I lost a lot of uh, good friends, and I just kind of got to this point where I was looking at the people around me that were, that were dying, that were getting locked up, and I started thinking, how long before, before me? Yeah. And so um, I kind of hit a rock bottom, and, and, and at that place, it was just like, okay, what is what is important to me in life? What do I want to live for? And uh, so I ended up kind of starting this next album, Cruz Ignati, and uh, which is Latin, means marked by the cross. And so a lot of that was, you know, I felt like we all have our own cross to bear, whatever it is in this life. You know what I'm saying? We we we're just, and I, personally, but you know, I'm I'm not religious. I don't really care for religion, but I know that at the very very bottom of where I was. You know, the only thing that got me out was was God, and it wasn't about going to church. It wasn't none of that. It was I was sitting there. I was at a forty-five to my head. I was ready to go, and I had something just said, "Just read the Bible." And so I just ripped it open, like, "Okay, talk to me," and stuck a finger down, and it just everything kind of just started going from there. And so from that, I started thinking, "What is really, really important to me from now? Like my 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 family, my kids, my passion, my music. Why waste that blood, sweat, and tears on anything else in this life?" And so we did an album called Cruz Ignati, and it was basically about dying to, to my old self and saying, oh, I'm going to leave this life behind. I'm gonna, and t today marks a new start, a new future about just going forward. So I ended up doing the album, and I kind of had it in my heart that I wanted to do a clothing line, and, you know, but it just didn't have the resources to do it. And then you know, eventually we got to a point where we could, and uh, I was out here in Colorado visiting, and we were in a car. My manager, Chris, and I were in a car, and... Uh, just that logo, that symbol just hit. And I was like, I need a, I need a napkin, man. And we're just scribbling on a napkin. And it just kind of went from there. And so, but we didn't want a clothing line. We didn't want, we didn't want to create something just, you know, that people could just put on. We wanted to create something that people could stand behind, you know. And we had a couple uh, people actually just got it tattooed for the first time. Couple fans ended up getting it tattooed on them last week. And this, what? I mean, we're just getting started. But it was awesome because you see these people who... I mean, you can turn on music and be like, that's a cool beat. And you go home and it's done nothing for you. Or you can have that music where you listen to it and you say, man, what I've been going through, I've been fighting with drugs, I've been fighting with my relationships, I've been fighting with life, I've been fighting with, you know what I'm saying, my own, you know, mental issues. And then sometimes music, it has that power to just grip you where you're at and just give you, you know what I'm saying, that little bit of inspiration to get yeah. over that hump. Well, it shows you that you're not the only one that feels that way. Absolutely. That's it. It's, it's sharing. Yeah. It's sharing. And the fact that, I mean, I mean, okay. First of all, I know I get I get sidetracked, I tangent, you know, but y'all yeah, don't know this. Once again, I know I'm just a snitch. <laughs> don't say that, man. <laughs> I'm out. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> sit your ass down. Sit down. <laughs> Snitching, man, it ain't. It's not a good look, bro. It's a good snitch. It's not a good look. It's a good snitch. It's a good snitch. It's a good snitch. Okay. Now this cat, he's done. Oh man. Now he like I say he's on my show. This, this but he's also done stuff with like like Sean P mm -hmm. from Young Bloods. Y'all mm -hmm. remember him and him and uh uh, uh J Bo. Yeah, yeah. Who? Yeah. J Bo from Young Bloods? Yeah. Yeah. And like Lil Yip John and everything oh, when yeah, they did that yeah. shit. Yeah, but okay, we ain't gonna go there. But No, nah, we go there. I mean let me tell uh, let me say this. In this music industry, there is there's probably no man that I have I have as much respect for as I do as Sean Paul. That dude found me in a nightclub. I was performing with Ritz uh, from Strange Music. Me and him were both underground at the time, just getting it. And that dude walked in, and he saw something in me that nobody ever did, and just, you know, took me under his wing. So... No, no, I'm talking yeah, about Sean Paul. That's, that's my boy. Oh, Lil John. I don't, I, I, never, I don't know Lil Yeah, see, like I said... I'm talking about Sean Paul. Yeah, Sean Paul. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk, gonna talk about, about that, because you've done stuff with Sean Paul. You've done mm -hmm. stuff with uh, uh, Bubba Sparks. Yeah. You actually got a video... And I'm, we gonna show that. I know, huh? I keep leading up to this, and I'm just like dangling that carrot right in your face. <laughs> right in your face. Like, hey, you get it? The candy. Where's the candy? But no, but you done so. And you here, and you here in Colorado, dude. Yeah. You gracing. I mean, you know what I'm saying. You done. You work with some of the greats, like far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You work with like some of the southern legends, man. Yeah. I mean, you work. They those cats ain't no joke, yeah. and you got them on your tracks and everything. So I mean, it's obvious, dude, that. You know what you're doing. You got a solid crew. You got a badass manager. So everybody, thank Chris. Thank you, Chris. 
Chris. That's what's up? Oh, he, he might need to make an appearance. He might just need to I, just I, grace by the camera and back out. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have yeah. to understand. You got to see. You got to see some of the, the mental power that goes into what we're doing here. Saswa, my friend. Uh, now, so this is his fault. Uh, my brother right here. So y'all can blame Chris for bringing us this cat right here, the crucifix. To see the CO. We, huh? To the CO. Uh, you know what, Sorry. dude? He's been all around the world, and now he's here. And you know what? I am so lucky, and I know y'all so jealous because he's in my house, not yours. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Now what? <laughs> we'll be coming to a house near you, though. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, like, just, just go to the website. But right now, I'm keeping him. He's on mine. So, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Got sleeping bags. Or just, I know. I just, just roll out we the floor. We kidnapping the whole crew. It's going down. We kidnapping the whole crew. Man. Now, wait a minute, you told me, how many albums you got out now? How many, I mean, you got that underground one, the, uh... Yeah. My Life's Prayer was, it was a double disc, 28 songs. And, and he said, here's the thing, man, everybody in Atlanta, they were dropping these mixtapes, and it was, it was just mixtape city. Everybody was dropping mixtapes. And so, from the beginning, I was like, man, I want, presentation was everything. I was like, how can, you know, because I didn't have a, I didn't have anybody behind me. I didn't have a team. It was just me. So, I would go into my, you know, my bedroom, I'd make the beats, I'd learn how to engineer, do all the recording, and then do the graphics, do the photography, my bathroom behind a curtain, you know, and then do some Photoshop. And so the biggest thing was how do I, how do I visually create something that's gonna just surpass what these dudes are doing? And so we ended up putting out a double album in one of those double thick jewel cases. It had two 32 page booklets in it, 28 <laughs> songs. So these dudes would go out and they'd be like, yo, here's my mixtape. I'd be like, man, that's nice. Here's my uh, kabam, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, and so we end up generating quite a bit of buzz in the Atlanta underground with that record. So that was a it was a rough rough record, but it was written during a rough time. So we had that. My life's prayer is the first. Crucignati was the second. Um, Acid Rain was is is the latest record that we uh, just released in September. And then there's there's one that will probably drop. That's got some unreleased stuff. Hold on, let me let me let me give my piece. And this is the cover. Can y'all see that? I don't know. I can't see. Can y'all see that? Yes, sir. This is the cover of Acid Rain. This is hot. This is really fucking hot. We'll buy it. In more than one way. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's hot. Like nuclear radiation on that. Exactly. Dude, this yeah. is... <laughs> and, man, dude, this is shot in Chernobyl. In Chernobyl, dude. This cat's been all over the place. I ain't, he didn't do it. I mean, but he... You he didn't... The yeah, you know what? I've been teasing y'all with the video. I'm they sorry. Just, a lot of artists, they green screen. I mean, they, they might just need to take them there to show them how we get that. Okay, no, y'all gonna watch this now. Y'all gonna watch this. So, here you go. Here's Chernobyl. Acid Rain. Crucifix.
see in Chernobyl is pretty much a picture people will have like within 100 to 200 years. Hey y'all, thank you. Welcome back and everything. I hope you enjoyed that video, Chernobyl by my man Crucifix here. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that, man. I really want to you went to Chernobyl. Yeah. I mean, it, here it, it st when it started, it was it kind of just became like a, a dream. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I became somewhat obsessed because it was seemed something like it was so far out of reach. But then you know I wrote the song because I was so I was so I was moved by the incident, but I was upset by the fact that I I was never taught about it. You know, I was completely ignorant to to it happening. I was like, man, this happened in my lifetime, and I don't know anything about it. And so I felt kind of like I can't really do this song and do the people, the victims, justice and just stay here and, and do a music video in Atlanta. So um, I threw it out to a couple people. I said, hey, you guys want to go to Chernobyl? And everybody was like, hell no. And well, <laughs> yeah. So I had to get a couple people who did didn't know what Chernobyl was and just say, hey, you want to go overseas? And yeah, okay. So you didn't even tell them what you got, hey, want to go to Europe? Like, yeah, well, yeah, I want to go to Europe. Well, I talked about Chernobyl, but they didn't really... Maybe they knew a little bit. I did send them some research papers. I don't know if they read it. You know, I just kind of kept it vague. But uh, could, we couldn't get anybody to go with us. And so I was signed. I was under a deal at the time. And I was like, look, I want to do this. And the label was like, nah, we don't want to fund this. And then when they found out nobody wanted to go, then they're just like, oh, why not? Well, it's dangerous? Okay, let's do it. So, Wait, what? Well, can you, when you can almost die, it's great TV. Basically. That's how record labels do you. Okay, this is as long not going to be great die, TV, right? make money. There's not going to be any near-death experience by any means. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't need those kind of fucking ratings. This, that ain't happening, dude. Uh-uh. He said I don't need those ratings. I like ratings. my chair. I think we should try it. Hell no. <laughs> Anything. 
Uh-uh, you didn't say that. Shit. No, 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 no. No, uh uh-uh, no. I know you got ideas going, and man. everything. Uh, what? Yeah. Good saying, man. No nuclear radiation. No <laughs> setting people on fire. Landon's talking about nuclear nuts. Nuclear yeah. nuts? Yeah. Landon's talking about nuclear nuts. Yes. Oh, let me tell you about nuclear nuts. Okay? And I, that don't sound good. <laughs> Wait, is that a candy? <laughs> I would prefer you don't eat them. It's not <laughs> that, no, Repo Man said, is there any songs with five star on the new LP? Okay, so Repo Man is asking, is there going to be any songs with five star on the new LP? Five Star produced the entire Acid Rain album. Great, great guys. G- guys I met in Atlanta. I've known them for a long time. We kind of came up uh, in the underground together. And um, they did, you know, I was, I was moving in a different direction musically. And they just, w- actually, the first song we did with them was uh, Sideways with Sean Paul. And oh. it was such a moving track yeah. that, you know, we were like, can we do an album like that? And that's kind of what started Acid Rain. So. Um, absolutely, man. I think this next record, you know, we really want to branch out. We've got probably five or six different producers we're working with, and I'm looking to start producing again myself just to kind of get that creative juice flowing again. Man, he took the words out of my mouth. Get the get the get get the motor going. Get Something the like motor that, you know. Going. I'm we, sorry, I thought that was so fucked up. We're out of our minds. Yeah, so. sorry. You see how we do it? Yeah, I should not have. But done yeah, they will. They will. Um, we got a couple tracks already from Five Star that we're that we're working on. So you know, we'll get them on the new record, and then. Um, you know, I'm a boy, so I got to throw them on. That's what's up, man. I make great, great music. So, yeah, we'll do that. And then, uh, what was the other question? Oh, uh, and, and nuclear nuts. Asking, uh, uh, if you go to hookah bars or enjoy drinking at all, or are you more conservative? Uh, as far as, like, as far as drinking? Drinking, smoking, you're in Colorado. I think it's just oh, yeah, I mean, I don't think we need to even talk about smoking, right? Oh, I mean, yesterday really, just man. went legal. <laughs> um... Did you see the line? I, I, I didn't see the lines. I didn't go out. I was. I know better than to go out on New Year's Eve now. Because here's the problem. In Atlanta, you always got to shoot guns. And I just didn't think it was a good look to be in Colorado shooting guns. So <laughs> we just play with swords like some ninjas. Wasn't cool. No, uh, for the most part, I, I'm Okay, fairly... maybe there will be a new death experience. Why you got swords? You just never know how. I'm sorry, I hate to you. No, I'm sorry. Anyway. Am I conservative? There's there's some things of you know in a lot of areas I guess you could say I'm conservative. Uh, I typically kind of in my own life, the biggest thing for me is is not to judge. You know what I'm saying? Like I just I know where I came from, so that kind of puts me in a place where who could I ever be to judge anybody else? Because we are all you know growing in life. So so for that you know I look at it like um, now there's back in the day I was just going wild on you know everything from meth to shrooms and you know I don't do that anymore just because it was yeah. killing me. Um, do I have a problem with, with smoking weed? No, no, you know, not at all. Uh, especially, especially now that it's legal. Do I have a problem, you know, with drinking? Um, I mean, the fact that it's legal, for me personally, I, I don't like to be too much out of control. Sometimes I get a little out of control. But uh, I try to stay, you know, as much in control as possible. So do I have a problem with those things? Am I conservative on those issues? Not really. I mean, you know, if you want to burn something, burn it. You're in Colorado, bro. Well, now they want to know if you're married. Am I, yeah, yes, I am married. Oh, you done pissed somebody off. Oh. Oh. Wow. Sorry, uh. <laughs> now, okay, you know the next okay, question going to be? What's up? Are you faithful? Absolutely. See, yep, he done really pissed see, you off now. This. There see, you go. Now, this is the problem with this question, though, because people ask you that question, and then everybody wants to test you. <laughs> what do you do? Don't test. You don't test me. You just I ain't test. Test. <laughs> I don't know how things go down over here. I ain't never been no. here before. <laughs> A death fold out. No, but no. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it comes down to, man, like, <sighs> marriage is one of those things that, Chris Rock said, man, marriage ain't sacred, not in America. You know, we don't we don't treat marriage with any type of, you know, sacred thing. But to me, you know, I I found somebody that was, you know, ride or die. You know, I was homeless. That's what's this, up. This girl was, uh, was pregnant, slept outside in the concrete with me in 32 degrees. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh... Am I perfect? No, no. You know what I'm saying? We've we've had failures, and, and marriage is work, bro. Any relationship is work. Anybody says it's not lying to you that's trying to sell you something. I know that's right. You know, so I mean, you know, have we had you know our faults and failures along the way? Absolutely. But life is about falling and getting up and learning. So yeah, know. it's not the happy times that prove it. It's the hard times. Absolutely, man. So see, yeah. see, like, man, I commend you on that one, bro. <laughs> How long you been married? Fourteen years. Actually, fourteen actually, you know, years. Yeah, fourteen years this this month. Fourteen. Right man. out of high school, man. Right out of high school. I was a little kid. Man. Out of high school, fourteen. Wait. Really? 
Are you born? How old are you? I hate to even ask. See, you, you're supposed to I'm ask that question. 25. I know. Are you 22, gonna... man. I got married when I was like 12. There you go. <laughs> hey, that's right. Oh, my. No, I'm 33, man. I'm 33. What? Yeah, 33. Still a baby. Yeah, right. man. Babies having babies. This is how it goes down. I mean, but, but here's the situation, though, man. Like, okay, because, you know, I met my girl in Africa, and she was from Finland. So... I was here, and I was a disaster, so had it not been for her coming and us getting married and her having our first kid, I, I probably wouldn't have made it another month. I love that. He so, met his wife in Africa, and she's from Finland, and he's from Georgia. That's a, that's a stretch, Let's play connect the dots with that <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the thing. Wow. Yeah, that man. is so cool, man. Yeah. That is so cool. And y'all, what did y'all meet? When? No, well, where? Oh, so you went to school with the yeah, we went to school. Yeah, went to school in Africa. America. In Africa? Yeah. And then she came back? She and came, she came back. I was a disaster. I was just, man, I was a mess. And, uh, but man, you just love, young love, bro. You know? That's true love, man. I don't care how old it is. Love is love. That's I mean, but that's, that, I mean, that's dope. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Because I ain't gonna lie, in the last 14 years, I probably had like, you know, 15, 16 girlfriends, and that's the ones I can't remember. I thought you were going to say wives. Wives? No, I've only had two of those. No, <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, in Africa, you can have as many as you want. But, see, what is the wrong with that mentality? Evidently, they've never been married up in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have prenups out there, man. <laughs> no, they got machetes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why they got to have so many. Oh, this is so bad. Did we just go there? No, Live? I was so sorry. Oh, I was so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's not a good look, man. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, but man. they do that. They do that. Where they do that? Where, where they do that out here? They do that here somewhere too. Where the, the multiple yeah, wives? Multiple wives. Yeah, I don't know where the hell that's at, man. I stay out that where that's just not smart. I mean, I can see that getting complicated. Dude, if I want that many headaches, I just hit myself in the hammer <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> Relentlessly. Yeah, dude, it's just no. like taking a sledgehammer and just keep stepping on it. I don't, I don't but recommend I, that. Hey, I think marriage is sacred, so if you find somebody you love, you do all that stuff, but just one. Yeah. Just one. I mean, come on, That's man. That's cool, man. Yeah, That's you cool. know. Just pick the, you pick can only drive one car you at one time. <laughs> <laughs> so Landon wants to know if you ever got your bags back from your trip from Chernobyl that they lost. I did. I yeah. did. It took them... Yeah, it took him what about a week or so to did landing go to with ship you? Him. No, 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 oh. no. Yeah, they they lost it. That, that trip, man, was and you guys, I encourage you to go to the website and just watch it, or you can pick it up on iTunes or rent it or or, or buy it either way. You know, I had to buy it because I had to have it on my iPhone. Just you know, you bought you, your own video. I, yeah, man. I mean, when do you get to be in your own movie and, and be on your iPhone? Like, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you I just had to do it, man. You know. Hey, that's what's up. I couldn't get it for free. iTunes, man, they got it locked. I iTunes know that. is not gonna let you get nothing for free. Even your own stuff. I know that we know this is yours, but uh, uh pay. Pay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh yeah, man, that entire that entire experience, it was like it was crazy. It was just one near disaster after another. But it was cool, man, because it was like every step of the way, it was almost like these little miracles. Because we just barely made it. We weren't sure if we were going to get to Chernobyl. My wife got in, you know, was almost killed in a car accident once I got to Ukraine. And so that was real, real crazy to be on the other side of the world and hear that. And then, um, man, you know, we're shooting a music video up on the top of the Pripyat Hotel, which is, you know, the hotel there in, uh, in Chernobyl. And so we're out on a ledge. You're probably about seven or eight stories up. And ain't no safety nets. Nothing, you know. So we get out there and we're dancing on this ledge and shooting this video. And then I kind of look back at the footage and I was like, dang, that's just not a good idea. You know, but we did it. So, uh, it, it, man, it was crazy. The whole thing was just one one big mess after another. But it all it all came together perfectly. You see, it's, oh, I love that. So, it's a beautiful mess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's when chaos exactly. comes to order, comes together man. together perfectly. See, man, that, yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah, man. I love, I love it when the plan comes together. Absolutely. Not like the A-team, but... You know what I mean. Yeah. Now, okay, you did this song with Bubba Sparks. Yeah. What's the name of that track again? Splinter. Splinter. Yeah. Now, explain that to me, because we're getting ready to watch that here, too, because I saw a piece of it. They've been watching it all night. Pissed me off, because I can't see it, because I ain't got a... I, I can't see nothing. I can't see you. But y'all can see us, though. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm talking to them. Yeah. They know. Yeah. They know what's up. They get mad sometimes. That's all right. That's all right. I know. We love you. Absolutely. Yeah, we do. That's the LL Cool J thing. <laughs> And I'm what the? <laughs> <laughs> Look like you got <laughs> peanut butter on your lips. No, man, <laughs> man, but you, for real though, man, if you could do that for for that many years and just be 
gangster? I know. That's prop. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah, yeah but no. Uh, Making ladies like crazy that. for I, years. That's what's up. Anyway. He made me crazy. <laughs> LL. Nah, <laughs> man. I love LL, man. He's all right, but no. I was, I was mad <laughs> when he got ate by the shark. I'm not going to lie, you know. Just, but. I, what's up with, I know. <laughs> huh? well, why are we even talking about this? How did we get on this subject? I don't, because you look, you don't even hear that. <laughs> yeah, just the whole I love you thing, you know. Yeah. Anyways, what were we talking about now? Splinter. Bro? Splinter. Okay, yeah, Splinter. Man, man okay, we were we were recording Acid Rain and, uh, you know, Five Star, they sent over this track, and I loved the track. I did the hook on it, but I just wasn't, nothing was coming to me. I, I kind of hit a point of writer's block. I just didn't have anything. And so um, I sent the track back to him. I said, look, man, I just don't feel like finishing this track. Uh, just put whoever on it. And so they hit me up, and they were just like, you know, uh, one day they're like, Bubba Sparks is going to get on it. And I, you know, I always loved Bubba Sparks. Big fan of Bubba. You know, just coming out of the South, man. You know, Youngbloods, Goody Mob, Outkast, Bubba Sparks. You know, yeah. these were these were like your heroes. And not to mention, you know, the whole Def Jam fight for NY. I mean, I was killing people at Bubba <laughs> Sparks. I'm just saying, you know. So when they said that, yeah, man, man, I was so I was so excited. I was like, yeah, man, I can't believe it. And then what ended up happening is, like, he, he may show up to the studio today, record. If so, he wants you here. So I was like, cool. And, uh hang up the phone and I get a call from a church and they, were, they they said, man, there's a guy who's dying in the hospital and the last thing he wants is for you to come pray with him. And so I was like, and I knew as soon as I said yes, I was like, I want to say yes and then I'm going to get this call that I got to go meet Bubba. Yeah. And so um, I called I called back and I said, okay, tell him I'll come. And uh, as soon as I hung up, man, they called, they said, Bubba's here, he's ready. And I was like, man, you have to tell Bubba to wait. Um, I'll be there when I can. I got I got to go handle something real quick. So I went down to the hospital with this guy and and prayed with him and his wife for a few hours. And I thought that that would be you know the last really the last piece of life that this dude would have. And then you know left from there to the studio. I was a few hours late and Bubba had already finished um, his first verse and half of a second. And we just clicked, man. I mean, just a good dude. And we just we clicked right there in the studio. And he said, Hey, would you do the third verse? And I was like, Absolutely. So you know I did the third verse. And uh, we, we started hashing out the video for it, and it was just the idea of, of just resurrecting Bubba. And we're like, hey, let's, let's, go, let's go a step further, man. Let's, let's dig this dude out of the dirt. So we actually we filmed it in a, uh, a cemetery way, way. It's like a Civil War graveyard way out in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee and in a 200-year-old mansion. And so we, you know, we, we buried him, and we, we dug him up and filmed it. And so it was, it was just an incredible day, incredible shoot. The video did extremely well, within, I mean, within a very short period of time. And then uh, we we ended up going on tour, and this was to me this was the whole icing on the cake for Splinter. We went on tour, we hit Atlanta, and this dude comes in to the show in Atlanta, and he's talking to me, and he's like, "Yo, man," he said, "I love Splinter," and you know I'm dapping him up like, "Man, thanks, brother," you know we're talking, and he said, "I never got to thank you for coming and praying with me that day at the hospital," and I couldn't I couldn't I didn't put two and two together because there was a few people that you know we had, we had reached out and helped. And um, he said, man, I had leukemia. I was supposed to die. And he was like, dude, God healed me. And so I was like, hold on, man. You know, like, I just kind of got thrown back. And then he, and then it just, it clicked. And I said, dude, you don't know, do you? And he was like, nah. And I said, dude, you were the inspiration behind that song. Left the hospital that day to record that song. And this dude was talking about how the song just touched him. So I went and got Bubba, you know, and we were at the show and we got to take pictures together. So, I mean, the whole thing, the way Splinter came together, it, just overall, song, video production, concept, and just even the impact it was making. And, and some of the, even now, some of the people who've just been, you know, impacted, you know, on different levels by the song, man, it's just it's a blessing to be a part of, bro. I just felt like an honor, you know? That's what's up. So, yeah, Splinter. Well, y'all, here it is, man. I got nothing to say after that, dude. <laughs> here it is for yourself. Splinter.
the winter And people gon' get up under your skin like a splinter I got a whole lot of issues that are unresolved I went two weeks without seeing nobody, just my dog His name is Blau, he's the closest thing to a child I may ever have I'm selfish as hell, why I lie? Too self-absorbed for relationships, still I try From time to time to find me one for my life And my patterns are hard for a decent woman to Respect or accept, so whores I keep them coming through In the bed with a babbling bitch that loves me and she bad, it's just something about us ugly After we finish, I hate when she try to touch me It ain't her fault, that's just me I slowed it way down, but I ain't perfect though Relapse is a record that I done heard before And I know Marshall Mathers, I'm talking Andy Mathis I'm talking candy habits, it's so sad and tragic The world is cold as a winter And people gon' get up under your skin like a splinter I know I'm a sinner all I can do is pray, God just take the pain away Cause the cold has a winner And light turn got up under my skin like a splinter I know I'm a winner But all I can do is pray, don't let me lose my faith today. I try my best to be so good to some folks The same people show me betrayal up close The flip side of that coin is I've been negligent With a lot of my real friends I never met to let a day turn into a month and then a year Without speaking to you, I know that it appears I just forgot about y'all, but really in truth I forgot about me too, this it glue I built around myself, it's so frigid And it ain't melting away, I don't dig it I know when life is gone, I'm gon' miss it It's like it never was here if you don't live it I think about the past and get so livid What the fuck was you thinking, I don't get it you so capable, personality magnetic Life could've been so good if you had let it The world is cold as a winter And people gon' get up under your skin like a splinter I know I'm a sinner But all I can do is pray God just take the pain away Cause the cold as a winter And life turn got up under my skin like a splinter I know I'm a winner But all I can do is pray Don't let me lose my faith May not be the shit to you, but where I come from Them people love up, therefore I must just Stay faithful, the Lord's got his hands on me And you don't hate me, you just don't understand, homie They're from humble beginners, I saw limitless Possibility fear was my only nemesis Along the way, I forfeited my innocence But that's okay, thank you, Lord For all the pain Alright y'all, once again, welcome back. I hope y'all enjoyed that video, man, especially after that explanation. That was Splinter with Bubba Sparks and my man Crucifix right here. And I guess right now, we got some questions. Y'all just nosy as all hell. <laughs> so, let's get to it, man. Yeah, Jelly wants to know when you're doing a show in Denver. Doing a show in Denver. Well, I think the best thing for me to do is just have our... Uh, booking lady come up and explain that miss crystal would you come and uh enlighten these people on when the when the denver show the first denver show is taking place 
This is Crystal. She's a little camera How's shy. It going? She's, gonna, she's gonna tell you though. Say hey. Hi. <laughs> so Crystal, when is it? So we've got a show in Colorado Springs at Mighty Culture Sports Bar on the 25th, and then we have one in Denver at Herman's Hideaway on the 29th. That's what's up. So that's That'll January. Kick off the tour. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wait. So January 25th in Colorado Springs. Yes, in Colorado Color. Springs. And January 29th at Herman's Hideaway. Right. Now, what was that, that bar in Colorado Springs again? Uh, it's What's... Mighty Culture Sports Bar. Mighty Culture Sp Sports Bar? Yes. Mighty Cultures? Mm-hmm. No, we're just Mighty Cultural people. That's how we get down. <laughs> mighty Culture Sports Bar. It's an Sport. awesome bar. You'll love it. Okay. Absolutely. Come the name. But what does that start off, though? Uh, that's going to kick off the Uprising Tour, which officially leaves Colorado on February 8th mm -hmm. and we'll be out on tour through beginning of April. So, so, for everybody who's watching, you know, we actually weren't planning on breaking this news tonight because, you know, we was just kind of in in thought process of, of, of it all, but we, uh, I might just have to spit it to him, let him know. Because, okay, a lot of y'all been asking, when you come in, when you come into my city, when you come in, okay, we're about to come to your city. We're about to hit 45 cities. And we're just gonna we're just gonna just get it. So if you're in the south, southeast, anywhere from Santa Fe to Florida, all the way up to North Carolina, South Carolina, Kansas, all the way, we're coming to see you. So I would ask that you please come see us. So see, that's it. See, and I ain't the only snitch. So he yeah, just, I, he snitched, just told himself. I just snitched myself. Yeah, you did. I'm out, bro. But no, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> Will you fit down? Oh my God. The show's over. Will y'all please oh, try to leave? Here I don't like all the again. door and ain't nobody okay. getting out. They lock me in. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sleeping bags on the floor. So yeah, uh, that that tour gonna start late. Yeah. But she's no, out. There you go, y'all. That's Crystal, y'all. Oh, uh, Crystal, sit your ass down. Why you leaving? <laughs> go get your ass back here. Go. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Everybody just trying to take off, man. Bye. There you go. There you go. So anyway, to reiterate and say this shit once again. This tour starts off uprising, right? Mm -hmm. Uprising. Uprising. So y'all about to get lifted. Only, you know, it's going to get lifted in Colorado. You know that's how we do. But that's in Colorado Springs at the Mighty Cultural Sports Bar on 25th of January, right? Yes. January. And on the 29th, it's at Herman's Hideaway. Y'all know what the hell that's at. That's in the D right there on South Broadway, nigga. Y'all better know what that's at. I love that little bar. And then, y'all taking off, y'all hitting 45 cities. 45 cities, man. 45. That's nationwide, man. They're going all over the place, especially down in the southeast. You know, because that's where we from. Y'all yeah. know where we at. Y'all know where we at, man. Come on. Hey, all day, baby. So stay in touch with this cat. Keep Absolutely, up with this man. cat, man. Follow this cat, dude. I This is the beginning of something beautiful. Man, it's going to be off the chain because I know I'm going to stay in tabs because I got He got the, the brim. <laughs> Mm, you can't say this. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. We got sidetracked. Okay, happened. we did get sidetracked. What were we talking about? What's the next question? What's the next Let's question? See, uh... Well, Landon asked Crystal, you out, girl? What's that now? The one that Landon asked about when you're going to release the magnificent shit song you did with Cujo Booty. Okay, so Landon, what's up, bro? Hey, I want to. I definitely got to thank you, man, for all the support. Cause, dude, you just been holding it down, man. And, and dude, there's nothing like people that just hold it down for you, man. So, like, all the people that just been just throwing it down live on the internet for us, man. I love y'all for real. Um, yeah. So here's the plan, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, I want to talk about this song, man, but it's all good. I'm going to talk about it anyway. Okay. Oh, shit. Here we so go. now you have to understand, I'm just going to be honest, okay? Music, for me, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not about, you know, trying to pretend that I'm something I'm not. It's not about trying to make yourself, my, personally, it's not about trying to be better or, you know, worse than who I am. It's just about who I am. So from the beginning, it was pen on the paper. This is my heart. I don't really care what the world thinks about it. I just got to get it off my chest. And so that's a growth process, you know what I'm saying? It's always just one day at a time, and you're learning from mistakes. And so thank God for mistakes, you know? But, uh, yeah, there's a point, and I'm going to give you the backstory. Man, I shouldn't give you the backstory. I'm going to give you the backstory because I love my wife. She's cool, man. My wife is from uh, Finland, right? So, you know, when she first moved to the, to, to the States, and this was years and years and years and years ago, she could, her English was a little rough, right? And so... You know, we're sitting there, and we're just having a good time, and we were, you know, chiefing a little something. And she said, this video is so magnificent. And I was like, that's a song. 
And so we ended up making a song out of it. And we did this smoke song. And uh, we ended up putting one of the guys from Goody Mob on it. This is an <laughs> old song. And I'm surprised that y'all even... I don't even know if it's available online. I don't even know how it landed. I don't even know where you found this song at. But, um, yeah, man, we're going to go back and we're going to... Because it's hard, man, on some of this older music, you know, when you've grown and you've kind of gotten through that process, it's almost like, you know, like, dang, it, you, there's a little bit, at least on my part, there's a little bit of shame of, dang, that's, that's who I was, you know what I'm saying? And you forget the fact that you, you, you've grown and you're still growing. But, man, like, honestly, I look at it like every song was, it, it was almost like a stepping stone. And, and, and I... I'm, I'm just going to throw it in. I'm going to throw it in like this, like a Bible story, man. If you, if you read a Bible story, there's no Bible story about a dude who was just perfect other than Jesus, a dude who was just perfect and lived a great life. And most of these dudes were just hot messes that had a lot of problems, man, but they, they trusted that God was going to do something good in their life, and they overcame incredible obstacles. And so with that, I think hiding your past is just not a good look, man. I think just putting out, hey, this is who I was, this is what I've come through, this is how I've grown, and I'm still in that process. So, yeah, we're going to go back, and this is a decision I had to make, was to go back, remix, and remaster all the old stuff and give it to you anyways, you know what I'm saying? It's not who I am today, but I think in being able to see who I was back then, I mean, maybe people can grow and learn from that. And if you don't like it, holla. Listen to something else. Oh, if you don't like it, shut the hell up and listen to something else. <laughs> I mean, keep it to your damn self. Not like we really want to hear your negativity. <laughs> damn. So, what else we got? I know we had a we had a question that was uh, yeah, it looks like I controversial. Had a question, and then they said, uh, "When was the last time you were with Lana? That you guys were both from the same neighborhood growing up?" And then he says, "Never mind, I'm Audi." So I'm not even sure if he's still there or not. What was his name? Uh, outreach, Outreck, R E C. Uh, it's a nickname. I don't know. It doesn't hey, we'll ring a bell. Landon says he found it on SoundClick, on his old SoundClick page. SoundClick. SoundClick sound snuck up on me. I forgot about SoundClick. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it. No, Landon. that's old. No, oh, it's so right old. Her name is El Elora. Elora? Yeah, that's the one asking, telling you guys grew up in the same neighborhood. She's still there. Elora. What's her last name? What's your last name, Laura? E-L-O-R-A. If I hope I'm saying that right. Elora? Sounds about right. What did, last name? Hicks. Elora Hicks. Elora Hicks is a girl that had just recently hit us up on Facebook. Really, really cool chick. She actually grew up in the neighborhood that I did. We didn't know each other, you know, them, but she uh, grew up in Riverdale. I was born in Decatur, and then I grew up in, like, Riverdale, Jonesboro, Morrow area. And, uh, yeah, so she apparently... Is from there too, so that was kind of cool, man. It's always cool, man. Like you, you get people that hit you up from you know so many different places. It's cool when people hit you up, and you're like, man, you remember that street? And then it's just you know you're just a stranger, man. You just start talking, and you're like, man, I remember that street. I remember that spot. I remember that spot. And so, yeah, yeah. Grew up in the same same neighborhood, Riverdale. That's what's yep, up. That's what she says, Riverdale. And I think you may have had all the questions. Oh no, wait. There's one. Had one if you had a, if you do benefit shows for people. Absolutely. Man, um, a big part of what we do, um, to me, music, the opportunity to be able to give back, there's nothing that parallels. You know, so we, we actually were able, a lady hit us up, man, out of the blue on Facebook. This was a, a couple, about a month ago, was Thanksgiving, hit us up and was yeah. like, hey, we're doing a, uh, like a Thanksgiving drive for the homeless downtown. Uh, would you come out and do a show? And we're like, man, absolutely. So we went down and they were, you know, they were bringing in turkeys by the forklift and we were able to just go into this church and, and just sing, you know what I'm saying, and rap for the kids. And, it, man, it was an incredible experience because you can get on stage in front of, you know, 5,000 drunk people who probably won't remember you the next day. But you can get on stage in front of 20 kids and it just be, it impact their life forever, man. So the benefit stuff, absolutely, man. We're looking to uh, expand, like even on the clothing line, it's like how can we, growing up in Africa, you see the poverty, you see the devastation, you see the things that these people go through. So it's like, man, I don't feel, as individually, I don't feel right just sitting here as an artist, writing songs, putting them out, especially if there's financial gain, sitting there and soaking that up. It's like, so how can we give back? So one thing we wanna do, um, because I grew up in Africa, man, seeing all that, it's like we, we got plans as a label and um, as a movement, as, as Crucignati movement, to be able to give back. And not just here, you know what I'm saying, but to be able to go to Africa. We had a plan. We wanted, we got some shirts we were going to print up that were going to be our Africa shirts. And for every one that somebody buys, 
we were going to donate. And not donate, because I know you, you see those little fat, those little sad faces on TV, like little kitty cat commercials, like, give to the child, and, and all that stuff. And then you know, that, that kid ain't getting nothing. Mm -mm. Kids are still starving. So our thing was like, look, we don't want to put anything together that's about, you know, charity, and it's not. So our goal was saying, yo, how can we, how can we create something where we physically go over there? You know what I'm saying? And, and all the guys, whether they want to or not, you know, all the guys, if you're on the team, you know what I'm saying? If you're part of the, the staff, we roll together, we go to the bush, and we physically clothe these kids who don't have it. And then allow the people who gave to see that, you know what I'm saying? To know that, yo, it's, it seems like a leap to say, yo, I could go to Africa, or I could go to Jamaica, or I could go to one of these places, because most of us, it just seems impossible. But it's not impossible for you to still be able to impact people in those places, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what we want to be able to do. So giving back, absolutely, all day. That's where we're at. That's what's up, man. See, that's what it's all about, too. I mean, like you said, you do something that you love. And plus, if you can give back to anything, if you can be, we've all been there. Yeah. But whoever says they haven't, it's, it's lying. lying. Yeah, you don't lie. Unless you're a dirty, rotten, heartless scoundrel, son of a bitch, and that means you're a politician. So, yeah, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Getting so it. Gag just getting on it. it. He's always just getting it. <laughs> <laughs> We did. We had one question though. What was the? What was there was a uh, a, a question that with the possibility of being controversial. I like those questions. Oh, you know what? Let's see. Still online? Yeah, she's still there. I don't remember what her question was. I don't think she got to the. Uh, got to the question. Uh, Landon did say, uh, "Tell Chris to make that Danny Trio video come to life." Oh. You know, Called you out on it, bro. Danny Trio. Okay, let me. Oh my, oh my God. Well, Y'all call Landon, me. bro. You gotta stop giving away the secrets, dog. I'm just saying. Damn. There's some things that gotta wait. <laughs> okay, I right, so. You um, know, no, no, no. We can't even talk about that. We can't yeah, talk yeah, about that. You, you got three minutes left in the show. You can keep going as you want, but okay. you can use that as an excuse. We just ain't got time. Okay. okay yeah, you we, know what? We, 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 we'll, we'll get to that because I, I want to make that happen. We're not at a place we can make that happen. But if we can, believe me, it's going down. So, so, man, so yeah, what's up? You talking so much shit. No, like, me he, he, he's cool. He's, 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 just saying, you know. He, he, he's anyway. He's cracking up because he said he made it public on Facebook, so it's no secret. Oh, I did, didn't I? Oh, see, I'm sorry. Did I? I didn't know. I didn't know. No, no, I don't remember. Not, no, 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 I don't remember. No, 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 on his side, he, he, he already did it. My bad, you ain't no snitch, man. Man, you the man, bro. It's all love, man. Yeah. Okay, so. I ain't doing that shit. Okay, so we got two couple minutes left. I just want to give a shout out, man, um, before we do. Uh, you know, Colorado was a big leap for us. You know what I'm saying? To, for me to be able to come out here, it was just like to be able to come out in, in Colorado is, is being as embracing and is just as cool as it as everybody's been here. I'm just blown away. Uh, we shot our, our first independent music video here called The Dreamer, and that was kind of what launched this. I mean, coming here and seeing Ooh. it and being around the people. So, I mean, if you guys get a chance, go to Facebook, go to YouTube. We're going to roll out with the dream. Oh, you're going to roll out with the dream? That's how we're going to end that You're going to end the show yeah, with the dream. I okay, love okay. this song. Uh, I know, I've been saying that, that shit the whole show. But if you're watching, you see why. You see why, man. You it's, see it's, why. It's, it's epic, man. But, you know, that being said, I just want to say, man, like, to all you musicians out here, I know we're on a local MC, so this is about the local music community. And not just here, man. You know what I'm saying? I look at... I'm a child of, of Africa and Atlanta and all these different places, man. But if you're a musician and you're on your grind, man, don't stop. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't be everything that you want to be. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what this video is about. Dream to the fullest. Because, I mean, there was so many times where it was like the world was against me. You're not going to make it. It's like, you know what? I dream. And, and here we are today. So for all y'all, man, don't give up on your dreams. Now, whoever tells you that you can't do it. Just simply say, you the goddamn lie. <laughs> I ain't got time to listen to you. <laughs> but I want you get this is how I'm into this. You guys y'all gonna see this uh the video, Dreamer. Mm -hmm. So enjoy this. But after y'all enjoy the video, after y'all see what my boy's doing, after y'all get love from this video, get the fuck out my house, man. I gotta go to work. Oh, it's like in that? The yeah, I gotta go to work. They know. You ain't got no Red Bull for me, man? Red Bull, I got coffee. Oh, man. I can't do Red Bull, man. Water, man. I'm sorry, that time. <laughs> that? That's what's up, oh. y'all, man. Here, local MC, about to get out. Crucifix. Much love to everybody that tuned in. Love y'all. Hit us up, Facebook.com/slash Crucifix Music or CrucifixMusic.com. Hit us up on YouTube. Check out the videos. Comment, like, subscribe, share. Do it all. We love y'all. When I was a child, they said I was a dreamer. Just another kid with his head in the clouds. 
I say I just refuse to settle for anything less than everything I dream. Either way, it's a long road. The world turns its back on you. And you find yourself treading through the wilderness of your mind, just trying to make sense of all the passions you've stirred up along the way. Your thoughts betray you. Doubt sinks in. Before you know it, you're like everyone else. Just another used to be dreamer that let the dream slip through the sands of time. Not me. The mind of every dreamer is a wilderness. But sometimes living a dream is just fighting to see the sunrise. Everything. Every day it's just me against 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 everything. Every day it's just me against